Hello and welcome. So I recently made a video about the equinox and the five rituals that you can do during the season to make the most of these energies. If you have not checked it out, definitely do it somewhere here. And I received a question in regards to the altar because one of the steps was to either renew it or to create one if you don't have yet. And I got several questions of, well, how do I even go about it? Like, what, what do I do? And I kind of briefly described it in that video, but I want to dive deeper into that. And I have more things here. Um, so this is, can you see? Yes, you can. So this is my altar here. Um, this is next to, right next to my bed because I have, a, I basically have a sacred space, honestly, in every room. Uh, but this, um, this one here is right next to my bedroom, right next to my big mirror when I do my mirror work. And, uh, for example, in my office actually, where, which is where I am right now, there's also a kind of an altar because there is there that water element, the air element, there's an incense when I have clients, when I receive them here, right behind this, um, they come in and I light the candle. So I make sure that I have all the four elements. So I want to begin by saying that I use the four elements. You don't have to. So an altar is really, you're creating that space, which is whatever you want it to be. It's something that makes you feel good, makes you feel connected, um, makes you tune into something greater than you, something that inspires you. And now some people have this, you know, concept, like it's confusing because on the one hand, it's supposed to be something that disconnects you from life in a sense of, you know, I'm tuning into something greater than me. So I'm no longer this ego that I am. And on the other hand, you also want things that do, um, you know, inspire that ego. So what is the balance between that? I've been asked questions about, well, how about saints or some deities or, um, someone that you personify. So look, it gets dangerous when, as uh, people say, when the teacher points at the moon to show you the moon and you look at the finger. So when we're getting caught up in the tool, that becomes dangerous. That's not serving us. That's why you kind of, it seems like it's the opposite, but you want to have two of both. So you meet, um, and you find that equilibrium for yourself. Where is it that nothingness and that connection to source and to essence? And where is it that, um, those things that inspire you without attachment, but you simply get, you know, you get the beauty and the experience and the love out of these things and you meet in the middle. So I personally have four elements. I also have actually here um, this candle. This candle is for work with specifically Isis, um, which came at the beginning of, uh, or no, end of last year actually. So this is something, this is usually not here. Um, but it, yeah, it is at this time when I do light it, when I'm working, doing particular kind of spiritual work. So I have here the four elements and they're all in order, there's a lot of earth. So whether it's, even if you don't have an altar, I mean, this whole video is about making an altar, but uh, beginning with bringing things from um, the earth element more into your home. So it could be more plants. It could be, um, honestly, my house absolutely transformed when I became a lot more conscious with, I started my doing my shamanic practice a lot more consciously and uh, living it, not just kind of having a separate, you know, identity, like how people meditate. It's like, yeah, I meditate, but I don't actually incorporate it into my life. So what you want to do is bring in uh, earth elements into your home. This can be stones. This can be uh, woodwork. This can be, um, yeah, I even have like a mandala made out of wood that's hanging here. So things that are of natural origin that will create this grounding grounding, centeredness, connection, uh, this will support you in that. So I have a lot of earth elements. I also have all these seashells. So another thing is like, yes, you can absolutely buy it, uh, things that you want to put there, but, um, I'm, I strongly recommend, I won't say I'm a big fan of setting the intention of what wants to speak to me. And again, this is just from the shamanic practice that it's not, about buying and about having a particular object as much as the connection that you build with that object. So oftentimes I would go on a divination walk, which is, I would ask a question. I would ask for maybe just guidance. Okay, what do you have for me today, Forrest? And I, some things would speak to me, a particular rock or a particular, um, I have here pieces of wood, um, a seashell on the beach. So it 
and there is a meaning for you there and you get those intuitive hunches or even whole stories told through your intuition um, that are related to this particular object. So you can absolutely buy people buy crystals, uh, be really kind of mindful of where it's coming from because some things are just, you know, gathered in a really unconscious way and not really serving our planet. Um, but yeah, but I would strongly recommend as well, like, see, it's like that. So this came, can you see it? Yeah, this came in during a divination walk as well to me. Um, so I would strongly suggest for you to gather your own so that you have a personal relationship with the altar. Um, I have here salt, sea uh, seashell that I picked up in Barcelona and some salt, which is very cleansing. It gathers up energy. I have pine cones. I, I have a lot of seashells because it's when I'm near the ocean, I get a lot of guidance there and just that's a really, a really good place of connection. So I have a lot of big seashells that I collected. Um, next, the water element. So I have a small bottle here with water and there's some stones as well that I picked up. And uh, yeah, the water has to be refilled because it does evaporate. Um, um, I'm just thinking of other alternatives for water. Honestly, it can also be, I mean, you can personify like get a blue stone and they can be like, okay, this is the water element. Uh, so that's also possible. It doesn't actually have to be water. My kids also actually have like little cups with water. And yeah, like I said, this doesn't have to be a big thing. My kids, for example, they have one of each thing. They have several stones where it's like the earth element is a bit more present, but then they just have a little, um, bowl of water, a little cup that they made. And then, um, yeah, moving on to the next one is the fire element. So I here have a candle. As you can see, I can, I light it a lot and it burns out quite quickly. So a candle or something symbolizing in the fire element, it can be a red stone. Um, it can be simply a candle. So my kids just have a candle that we don't light up. Um, yeah, anything that makes you think of the fire element, it could be also like a piece of coal, which is kind of um, more of earth, but for some, like for your mind, it may associate with the fire element. So you're welcome to do that as well. The next one is, uh, the air element. So air element, I have sage, I have Palo Santo uh, with a um, with a shell so that it doesn't, so it's all safe and burn. Um, yeah, also my tray is metallic. Make sure that if you do have candles or anything that you're burning that it's just fireproof and safe. Feathers and as well feathers that have been picked up during a divination walk and washed and disinfected, but those that um, come from me and my my own personal journey so now how do we use it we've made that you can also like i said you have pictures of deities or saints or maybe your loved ones maybe some ancestors uh, that remind you that you want to feel the support of so that's also fantastic to put there how do we use this there's again no right and wrong way um I would strongly recommend during such times as the equinox or the solstice to be very mindful connecting to each element, recognizing this is again just one of the ways, recognizing as you move through the elements, the earth is my body, recognizing the water that is running through you, that is such, it's such an important part of your life, you wouldn't be able to function without it the heartbeat and the fire that is within your body, the heat that your body produces, that again is so important for your survival, the air element, the air that you breathe. So connecting yourself that you are not separate from the elements, you are it. And this is to kind of let go of those walls that the ego, the mind created and tuning into the wholeness to connection that I am one with everything. I am one with everyone. I am one with nature. I am one with spirit. So this is one way. Another way, this is something that I do during every single new moon. For example, when I'm doing readings, I do use, um, so I use the cards going over every single element uh, to clear and cleanse it to, uh, for the reading to be blessed basically by the elements. Um, another way, yeah, like I said, during the solstice, we actually have that on the table. So when we have our big equinox or solstice uh, feast, basically the special meal, the special dinner or lunch, uh, we all, we also have the elements in it to make sure to acknowledge each of the elements. And it's the same as in so many different traditions, you know, they uh, worship the ancestors, they say thank you for the support. So because um, I'm kind of 
disassociating with something that you know is not is less egoic that is there's always the earth element and the air element and the fire and the water um so i kind of go away from particular people or particular stains but you're welcome to do that if that's what resonates with you so this was a short introduction of like a simple way how you can do this for you again um just make sure that it's in alignment you're on this path, you were drawn to this content because you believe that you are destined for something greater. Because you see everything around you and it seems so limited and small and it's like, this doesn't feel right. So you don't want to go from that doesn't feel right to, oh, okay, I have to learn a system that's like A, B, C. And no, no, you're coming from that and you came out of that because it doesn't feel quite right and you get to create something that is entirely right for you. So that's why this, um, I actually remember in my own path, when I was meditating and I got the concept of the four elements, and this is what I use in my one-on-one work with clients or in the Powerful Self Membership, I work with, yeah, all of my workshops really, I work with the four energy centers in regards to the four elements. When I first received it, I had to look up where it was from. And my mind was so not comfortable accepting that. And then I received the validation. A few weeks later, I found this very old, like ancient uh, Buddhist practice that is not really practiced anywhere anymore. That is exactly that with the four elements. I didn't need that validation. But at that point, I felt like I needed it. It's like it wasn't right if someone out there hasn't taught it before me, which is ridiculous. Because, for example, if we go in a seven chakra system, that's not actually so. And uh, I mean, the whole seven chakra system, don't even get me started on that. It has been very westernized. And it's not that it doesn't work. Like for some people, if that's what works, fantastic. If the, But I'm just saying that that's not what it was originally supposed to be. And perhaps in the upcoming years, people are going to shift it and, you know, change it even more. So what I'm encouraging you to do is not be in this, okay, this is a box or I need the validation. Like I need a shaman to tell me that I'm doing it right. Or I need a priest to tell me that I'm doing it right. Or I need, you know, to find out like that this ancient teaching did exist for me to actually start practicing, uh, which was for me, even though the elements felt so right, but I was so insecure at the beginning when I first started that I wasn't sure, okay, am I doing it right? Like how, how do I work with the elements? And I'm not sure of this because I got very clearly where those centers were, but I wasn't comfortable with it because I didn't, um, yeah, basically I wasn't confident enough. So just know that there's no right and wrong way. The spiritual path is all about you finding your way. And that everybody speaks the same, uh, different language, sorry, but we're talking about the same thing. So whatever works for you, use that. And also get out of this, I know, when you do find a technique that works for you. And also get curious about something else, because that is what the ego becomes very um, restricting in that, because that's just what it does. So it's like, okay, it's uncomfortable, I don't like it. Okay, now I know this and I'm comfortable with this and just this is what we're gonna be following by the book now. And we're closing off to any more new opportunities for for new knowledge and guidance to come through. So this is a fun exercise, have fun with this, connect with your space, honor yourself, honor the elements or some saints or whatever it is that you want to honor and know that you can absolutely never go wrong because you're divine. You are the powerful self. Thank you.